support uh, the use of the open source software, including Postgres, uh, Postgres, uh, Postgres SQL. And so today, um, I'm going to talk about uh, about the uh, scale out uh, Postgres SQL uh, solution called Postgres XC. XC stands for Extensible Cluster. And so, uh, well, uh, because this is this is the third talk about Postgres XC in Postgres Open, so I'd like to know uh, how many of you are, uh, have heard about XC. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, okay. So I so I'd like to skip well uh, introduction of the XC maybe. And so today, uh, I'd like to talk about how we can configure and run and operate the cluster, uh, cluster of uh, Postgres XC. Okay. And if uh, the time uh, doesn't run out, uh, I'd like to talk about something about the uh, about high, availab high availability uh, characteristics of XC. So here's some resources well, related to Postgres XC. The almost all will be from, uh oh, no pointer, from here. Um, yeah, Postgres, Postgres XC sourceforge.net. <coughs> this is our project, project website. Uh, in fact, it is, uh, it is redirected to our wiki site, but, it's, uh, but it contains almost everything you need to uh, to uh, to use XC as well as say uh, joining the development community. Okay. Yeah. So this is the most important site, and also uh, here's uh, here's well several of the uh, useful sites, but uh, you will find the link uh, to all these uh, from this main site. So yeah. So please try. Yeah, uh, so two years ago uh, in, uh, in, this me, uh, in this conference where we, uh, we made the first introduction of XC, so I uh, presented some architecture and the scal scalability. And last year, uh, we presented some of the internal issues, including the, plan, the uh, distributed query planning and also execution. So this year, uh, I'd like to focus on the deployment, configuration, and operation and also slaves for higher, higher availability and cluster management. Uh, so last month, uh, we, uh, we released the version 1.1 of the XC, and so we added many, uh, in, uh, many important and uh, interesting features. First of all, so now uh, we can add as many servers as you want, uh, while you are running, while you are running uh, Postgres XC, so uh, I will show you well how to do it. And also, we have low-level uh, triggers, returning, and operation tool called PGXC Control, and also many distributed query planning improvements, such like out out joins, and pushing down limit order by group by all these things. And also improve uh, also execution is improvement much, including such as such as I say hash join and merge join at coordinator, and also distributed sort and merge at data node, as well as say uh, merging with Postgres SQL uh, 9.2.4, and also uh, well uh, for the restarting uh, now GTM it's a global transaction management uh, manager. Um, has a say a restore point uh, backup, so uh, all these are very important in uh, to use uh, Postgres XC in production. So then, how we can, as you know, well, or as you see from this figure, um, we have many Postgres SQL like. Uh, XC component for uh, well fi five to ten or even twenty, and it means that es essentially you have to configure each of them manually, 
Wow. It's a tremendous work. Yeah. And so, uh, but anyway, uh, in a sense, well, we, we, have to, we have to configure all these uh, nodes uh, individually and tell each of them, well, what is, uh, say, each of them, um, the configuration of other nodes. So where it is, how to, uh, how, how to access. So uh, it could be very painful, even for, <laughs> even for myself. And also uh, operation of uh, such like uh, starting, stopping, or uh, uh, failing over, and add node, remove nodes, these, uh, they could be also uh, very complicated. Um, well, uh, to be honest, we gave a presentation about how to, how to do it manually uh, in the PGCon last year. Yeah, and after that, so we found that uh, we need, well, well uh, we need uh, more, say, uh, uh, more convenient tools to support all these operations. So here, uh, I'd like to show, well, uh, the tool called PGXP Control to do, well, many things uh, for your behalf. Yeah, and it simplifies configuration and in, uh, initialization, and start and stop, and simple monitoring and failover, and also the uh, management of the node. Yeah, first of all, yeah, uh, instead of uh, the configure, uh, configuring each node manually, um, PGXC con uh, control reads single configuration file. And it is, uh, well, and it is a shell script, so bash script, so, uh, so, you, so you, can, you can do anything you, uh, you'd like, or you can do well many uh, complicated things uh, in this file. I will sh I will t I will show you well how to how to write these uh, how to write uh, this configuration file later. But in essence, so y what you should tell is the name of the each node uh, and also uh, where it is installed. I, I mean host name or IP address and what port they use and what work directory. Uh, you use. Yeah, coordinator needs well additional pull up port, and also uh, if uh, you are configuring the slave of coordinator or data node, uh, you need a uh, wall archive directory. Uh, and also you can give a specific configuration parameter for uh, all the coordinator or each coordinator and also all the data nodes or each data node. And the PGXC control takes care of all uh, everything. Uh -oh, sorry. So here's a demonstration. Okay. Uh, I will I will show you well how to conf how to how to do how to do the, the configuration and the initialization and the start stop and uh, uh, and also uh, some handy uh, some handy tools and failover and the component addition and remove us. Uh, as well as table redistribution. If if you if you add the node, or you need you need to you need to redistribute the table uh, for the new for the new node, and uh, because the table can be distributed uh, among any subset of the node, so uh, so so you so you should do this manually uh, at present. But anyway, so uh, and uh, these and and the material, uh, the material of this talk, as well as uh, this, uh, this is this is a uh, this is a demonstration story for today. Uh, they, uh, you can download all this material uh, from a PostgreSQLXC uh, uh, homepage. So, uh, so if you're interested in, please try. Yeah, and the configuration file is also available. Anyway, so uh, this is a uh, conventional. Terminal. So uh, here's how to start it. That's it. And so first of all, what you should do is, okay. Um, well, there's nothing. Uh, 
at, 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 uh, when you start, you don't have anything. So, uh, so you need, so need, a, you need, a, say, uh, uh, so you need a, a good example of the, uh, of the configuration file. So to do that, okay, you can tell to prepare the control file, uh, configuration file. So see how it looks like. Okay, so the prepare command, and the prepare command will uh, make an example of the control file to a uh, specified file. This looks like this one. So it comes with. Uh, example of the configuration, as well as an uh, annotation of each parameter you, sh uh, you should like, uh, so you should specify uh, uh, for your con uh, for your configuration. And I will uh, I will I will go back to this configuration file later. So then, what you should do next is. You have to deploy the binary of PostgreSQL to all the nodes or to all the all the servers you are configuring, okay? Uh, because make just make install cannot take care of all these things. Okay. Uh, make install can take care, can uh, will install just binary just locally, so we have to deploy it uh, to uh, to all the servers we are working with, and. Uh, this configuration file uh, has a definition where the local uh, installation uh, went. Okay. So once you once you did it, oops. What you should do is yeah, deploy all. That's it. And because uh, because uh, PostgreSQL X, uh, PostgreSQL X C uh, binary is available as a R, a RPM, so you can do it uh, in each of the uh, in each of these servers manually. But anyway, so this that's all. Well, wow. it's great. And if you would like to know uh, the configuration of uh, this cluster. You can you can issue the, uh, the show configuration command, Oops. and it will show uh, what what is going to be uh, configured in each of the server, and uh, if you specify the uh, the server name, so it will tell uh, what is going to be. Uh, installed in each of the servers, like this. Anyway, um, so once it's done, what you should do is to initialize all. Then this, then uh, XC control will take care of uh, all the init DBs and also initializing the uh, global tra global tra transaction manager. Uh, everything. Uh, we are configuring uh, four coordinators, four data nodes, over four servers. And uh, let's see. And also, we are going to have uh, s slave servers for each of this uh, this component. So, so we are uh, so we have configured um, sixteen uh, PostgreSQL instances. But it's done. And starting and stopping is very straightforward. So uh, let's see what's going on. It shows well what is running, and if some if, if something is uh, something stopped or crashed, it says that it's not running. Anyway, so you see, 
according to the master's way, uh, master's way, master's way, way, all these things. So you are ready to uh, say to create your database and, and uh, uh, create your database and also uh, well create uh, any tables you write you'd like as just a uh, just just a simple post, a simple Postgres SQL database. But uh, one, one thing uh, you should one thing one thing you should be uh, careful is that because we have four of them here, so when you when when you connect to uh, XC, uh, XC cluster, well, uh, so you should specify which coordinate to go. Yeah, and uh, because because uh, with the with the conven conventional uh, PSQL, you need to uh, specify both the host name and the and the pro and the port number. But it is something. Sometimes it is not easy to remember what it is. So uh, instead. Um, XC control has this large uh, large C create DB or PSQL large PSQL command. Well, to select uh, the to select the coordinator or to specify the coordinator by the coordinator names. Okay, yeah. So here, XC selected coordinator four. But but don't don't worry. Well, you can you can go to any coordinator to any coordinator to do anything, and the result is visible uh, from any other coordinator without any delay. Now, we are ready, and so this time. <laughs> It is selected coordinator three, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's just random, yeah, random way. And then you can create the tables and set up the date for this demonstration. Yeah, okay. And here, uh, I didn't tell up anything about this table. And so in this in this so in this case, the first column is taken as a distribution distribution column, and that each data here will go to will go to the go to uh, go to one of the data nodes based on uh, based on the hash of this value. Okay, but in the in the second case, yeah, I specify distribute by replication. It means that uh, each row go to all the underlying data nodes. Okay. So, uh, so the important thing is to, uh, to, say to, to, uh, to determine the, uh, to determine which, which should be duplicated and which should be distributed. Okay, so uh, uh, in the most cases, if you have small and static um, master tables, they should be duplicated. Okay. And if you have big and very dynamic tables, it is uh, sometimes called transaction tables, they should be duplicated. So in most, so in most of the applications, uh, we, we choose very small set of rows from the big transaction table and join it with many master tables. So if master table is duplicated on on all, all the nodes, then such say such join operation can be done locally with a small set, smaller set of master of uh, transition tables. This is how XC well scales out. Okay. Yeah. So T1 it is distributed. So you will see, well, it's not the, not the order uh, we inserted here, because because it is selected, it is because it is read from uh, many of the data underlying data. So instead, yeah, it's much more convenient. And also, 
in the case of T2, yeah, we have we have the uh, we have all, uh, this, the same result that the uh, underlying uh, stage is very is something different. You, you know, so we visit each we visit each each node to to uh, to see how the T1 is distributed among. Yeah, the number number is not equal, but uh, if we have many many more rows, then uh, then, uh, then the number of the uh, number of rows in each data node will will, uh, will be close to equal. But uh, but in the case of uh, replicated table, yeah, we do the same thing. So you see that each node has the copy of uh, the, same, the same set of the nodes. So if this is the master table, yeah, well, the join with this table can be done locally. We don't, uh, so, so, yeah. Okay, so this is very simple uh, demonstration of how you can configure uh, the configuration file will, uh, I will explain the configuration file later. So then I'd like to show you, well, how XC can uh, take care of the failure of each node. So first of all, uh, you know, many, many, uh, many people told me that, okay, a global transaction manager could be a uh, uh, single point of failure. Yes, it is. And uh, so now we have, uh, uh, we have a uh, slave for this. Yeah, so I'll show you how it works. Okay. Then I'm going to kill the GTM. Yeah, it is just killing by by kill command. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, I'm I'm not say I'm not uh, I'm not uh, uh, stopping this gracefully. See how it's how it works. Okay. Yeah. So GTM master is killed, and so it's not running. So what we sh can do else? Okay. I'll tell to fail over this with a slave because slave is running. You know, slave is running. And next, uh, next thing we, we should do is, yeah, we have GTM proxy, it is just, uh, just a proxy to the GTM, and uh, we, we, ca we have to tell GTM proxy uh, well to reconnect to the new master. But uh, it's also a single operation. Okay. Uh oh, sorry. Wow, it happened, sorry about that, wow. Sorry, uh, maybe maybe I should do. Uh, yeah, I found. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, GTM proxy crashed. Well, I didn't. I don't. I didn't have this. Uh, well, uh, in the past, but uh, maybe after that. Uh, yeah, I will look into. Yeah, <laughs> it happens in the demonstration. But anyway, yeah. So, let's see. Well, how's what's going on? Anyway, anyway, uh, we now have uh, former GTM slave as running master. So, so everything is okay. And uh, next thing is, okay, then kill the data node. It really uh, stores some, of the, some portion of the, uh, of the database. Uh, uh, no, no, sorry. It was before that, yeah, okay. 
let's see what's going on. Yeah, so uh, this is killed. And we have a save, save here. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's it's an error. Something is uh, something doesn't work. Uh, uh, so, so let's let's try the other one. Maybe it, it works. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah. This shouldn't work. Yeah. 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 Right. So it shows that well, even though even though you have you have some some portion of the data not failing, uh, as as long as as long as the transaction does not care does not say does not uh, read or write uh, such failed node, you can continue to operate. Yeah. 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 So, uh, for example, for, for, for example, if we if we issue uh, the DDL, uh, it propagates to all the data nodes. Yeah. So, so, so it fails, but it just fails. Okay. Anyway, so uh, let's so let's fail over it. Yeah, that's it. And do the same thing. Same, same thing. Okay. So. Yeah. So good thing about it is yeah. Uh, well, we don't have we don't have to give up uh, every. Give up everything uh, when some of the node fails. And in, well, I I killed uh, data node here, but if you kill the coordinator, well, uh, you can, so you can you can do everything uh, with the remaining coordinators, um, except for DDLs or something like that to propagate to all the nodes. Yeah. So you see. Everything here, and uh, yeah, here's it. Here's uh, from there down too. And then next next thing is uh, next. Uh, I will show you well uh, how to add one more data node to this system. And uh, we uh, uh, I'm using the new server called Node 10. And because node 10 doesn't have any <laughs> binary here, so I have to uh, deploy this to node 10 as well. Okay, this down. So we can add the new server with a single line. I tell or add data node master, and we, we can add the slave in the same manner. And then new name, 
and where it is. So the, the server name and uh, number of the uh, number of the port to use, as well as the directory uh, for the new data. That's what you need. Um, oh, oh. It's doing well on many things as you see here, yeah. Uh, because 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 we have to copy uh, copy the um, all the catalogs from the existing node to the new one, but just the catalog, not the data. So see how it's, it's going. Uh, how it's going here. Uh, we have uh, just a master, but we can add as well uh, the, a slave as well for the demonstration. Well. And then, let's see what's going on with, other, with, uh, with these tables. Yeah, you see no rows on data node five uh, because because we just added the node, but we we have not redistributed uh, the table because because we because we can distribute the table to any subset of the node. Uh, yes, so I will show you well, yeah, how, how to read this visa just uh, to no, uh, including the node file. Again, so we have an uh, alter table command and then just add node and the new node name. Ooh, ooh, ah, sorry. No, no. Yes. So the yes. 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 You're right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hash hash key hash key is uh, so uh, hash key is defined defined over uh, over just uh, just set of the node defined node or just a defined node for each table. Yeah. This table, the data. Uh, this alter table, this does redistribute the table. It does the table. Yeah, yeah, because this add node, <laughs> and also and also we and also you can redistribute the table with smaller set of the node uh, by uh, by delete node directive. I will show you again this later. And you see. Uh, we have five node here uh, defined over over the both these uh, these two tables, yeah. and so PGXC class uh, catalog defines well defines uh, how it is distributed and what node it is distributed over. Then for P1, yeah, we have this. Uh, we have we have all uh, this data on pi with new newly distributed rows. Okay. So for duplicated tables. Uh, data of the five also have duplica uh, duplication of, of this table. Okay, then uh, next next thing is to drop this node five again. Uh, for, um, and before dropping uh, node, we need to redistribute di distribute these tables, or well, to exclude. Uh, the, uh, to, uh, to exclude 
Uh, this is the data on the pipe, for example. Yeah, it's done. So let's see, well, how it looks like. Yeah, so as an original, in, a, in an original status, so data node 5 has no data here. And. Uh, so, but even though it's deleted, it still keeps the previous object? Um, yes, yes, because, because, uh, because data node 5, data node 5 has, uh, has a say, a catalog of this table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you issue the redistribute command, mm -hmm. does it take the data from data node four and redistribute it among the other nodes? Um, no, because because when data node four fails, and when and if you don't fail over, or if if you don't have a slave of data node four, you have to recover the data node five uh, four first to get all the data available. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so for example, in this case, when data node, data node 3 fails, you don't have, you don't have these rows available. Yeah, unless, unless you fail over uh, this with the slave. Or, uh, or you recover data node 3 uh, by, uh, say, uh, by, by any, any recovery method. Yeah, so you, so need, you, you need to get this available. When you re redistribute it, okay. Just out of curiosity, is there a proper data mode? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the some other people are working to working uh, uh, for the uh, for the fail, uh, automatic failover system, and uh, I believe they are working for pacemaker and uh, heartbeat or crossing. So then. Having this, yeah. So we have removed, and also this drop node showed that all the other coordinators are configured uh, or dropped uh, this data on the five from its catalog. So see what's going. See well uh, what it looks like. Okay, it is very similar to the to the original one. So how about the uh, uh, data on the five? You saw that uh, well before we remove the data on the five. You see that uh, there are no rows, but in this case, we, well, we don't have data on the five defined in a cluster, so it's complex. Yeah. So. Uh, in such a in such manner, so I, I think so. You, uh, you saw well uh, the uh, PGXC control with the PGXC control. You can configure and operate the whole cluster very in, uh, very simply. And so I will show you well how we how you can um, configure this or with the PGXC control. So uh, we need you need to specify all these well GTM master and uh, optionally GTM slave and GTM proxy optionally, and, and master and slave of coordinate and data node. But uh, it, is, it is not as uh, complicated as you, are do, as you do manually. So this is the overall configuration. So um, I emphasize the uh, uh, essential part in red. Yeah, this is the insta installation directory. So you can you can specify this uh, in any any manner you like, and also the owner, and also the uh, operating system user, and temporary directory, and also uh, when you change the, the cluster configuration, uh, the uh, configuration file is also updated automatically. Okay, and uh, 
and also you can you can back up this change uh, to other place in the network. So you, so you can specify this. In this in this case, uh, for simplicity, I well um, yeah I specified no uh, for the backup. But if you specify this, the why, and um, yes, telling yes, so you can specify all these. And then GTM master, it's very, it's more, much more simple. Simple. So name, and uh, server, port, and Vicky, all these. And if you'd like to have some extra configuration, you can you can specify the name and also, um, very uh, typically, you can you know, say you can you can write the shell script to set up all set up this configuration file just after this section. Slave is very similar, yeah. So before that, so you, you, you should specify that GTM slave, uh, you are going to use as GTM uh, slave, and also the, all the other are very similar. And property, okay. Uh, you should say if you, uh, it's a good, good idea to have uh, a GTM proxy for each servers to reduce the amount of the uh, amount of the in, uh, internet overload uh, workload for GTM, but uh, because and uh, in this time uh, in this case we have four of, uh, four servers, so uh, you can specify each of them as an element of the array. array. So it is much more uh, simpler, and because each server has the same uh, has the same directory point, so. I just copy it far from this uh, variable. And if you specify also uh, each uh, uh, the uh, common uh, specific configuration here, but I'm not using this now. And the coordinator also name, port, and also pooler port. And uh, uh, and H, uh, uh, PGHBA entries for our coordinator. And then the master. So, so we specify the server name and the directory as well. And also, uh, and also Max Love Sender uh, for the, uh, for, uh, how to say, uh, for the slaves and the slave. Because slave shares the port number uh, with the master, so we should, so we don't have to specify the port number for the slave here. Anyway, so the server name and the directory, and also uh, archive log directory as well, and the data node. Oh no, and extra configuration. So uh, this is a uh, this is an example how to say how to specify. Uh, optional uh, settings for each of the uh, PostgreSQL.com. Yeah, uh, you you specify the file name and then write the shell script to set up uh, these values uh, to each of the files. Yeah. And data node is also the very similar. So it looks it looks well a bit lengthy, but uh, it is iteration of very simple things. So uh, I think. Uh, I think so. You are not configured, uh, not confused with this. Okay, additional configuration is the same. And when the configuration changes, so for example, uh, we start. We ki I, I kill the GTM and one of the data node and the failed over uh, them. So they are updated uh, by adding uh, the by adding these changes to the original configuration file, such like this way. Okay. So it, it says that how, how are the cause of the change and when it is done and the change of the configuration. Okay, uh, we have two more. So now, so I'd like to talk about the uh, characteristic Characteristics of the failures, as you saw. So GTM is obviously it is a single point of failure, but we have the slave to fail it over. 
And uh, GTM proxy, it just a proxy, so it does not have any persistent data. So uh, if it fails, uh, you just you can just restart. And in the in the case of coordinator, yeah, every coordinator is essentially a copy. So when it fails, um, other coordinators work. So as long as you don't issue uh, any DDL or something like uh, some other command which propagates to all the nodes. Um, you can do without this coordinator. Or if you give up such a failed coordinator, uh, you can issue uh, or you can remove that coordinator from others. And in the case of data node, yeah, it's a, in the case of a shared table, uh, it's, it's a single point of failure. So we need a, so we need a slave. But as you see, yeah, so here's some, uh, here's something to, uh, for the backup, so GTM we have um, uh, we have a slave, and also uh, and also we have the uh, yeah we have slave and the data nodes have a slave, and the coordinator. Well, we can have a slave, or uh, we can give up uh, some of the failed coordinators and then add this afterwards. So it uh, it's up to you. Here's how GTM slave works. So, uh, uh, at present, we need a GTM proxy for uh, for this operation. So, when the uh, so while GTM master is running, it backs up every uh, well, uh, every status to slave. So, when it fails, uh, slave can fails over, and then GTM proxy can reconnect to the new one. Um, yeah, it is, uh, it is kept open, so slave does not have, the slave does not close, uh, or when the slave is running, yeah, um, it is, it is, the connection is from slave to master, not master to slave, so, uh, so, so, so slave leaves this connection and never use it, while, while it is, while it is, uh, uh, before it restarts. Yeah, and uh, when it becomes the master, it begins to accept the uh, connection from others. Is it, hi, yes. Um, when if the master sends a change notification to the slave, mm -hmm. does it wait for the slave to acknowledge the notification no. before it enters? No. So if the master dies, Mm -hmm. that are not backed up to the slave. Um, the, uh, the message is sent before GTM master sends acknowledge to the, uh, to the proxy. Right, but if that, if it doesn't wait for the slave to acknowledge mm -hmm. or receive mm -hmm. a message, um, then the message could be lost. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry. Well, my, 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 ex my explanation was not co correct. Okay. So, the GTM proxy okay. sends a group of the command, well, uh, or a, gr a group that command. In, uh, so, uh, when GTM master send a reply to the proxy, for example, it, it, it will require, well, tens, uh, tens of uh, new, G, new, G, new GXID uh, or, yeah, something like that. So, uh, so, so GTM master, before, before GTM master send a reply here, uh -huh. it acknowledge a bunch of uh, the same number of the commands uh, uh, from the slave. So it sends it sends the information to the slave and waits for the slave to acknowledge or receive the message? Yes. But 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 not not each of the backup. So, it is done. Uh, it is done well when GTM master is responding to the proxy. Okay, uh, because for example, when 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 each coordinator 
begin new transaction, it asks for a new GXID. Yes. And G, uh, GTM proxy well, uh, groups all, all, all such you know, requirement uh, in, a, in a single packet, in a single message, and sends this to the GTM. So you're saying it's fast? Yeah. Uh, any more? Any more questions about it? Okay. So um, let's see. Yeah, but in the case of data nodes, okay, um, there will be uh, some alternatives uh, for the backup, but uh, uh, but. I well, that streaming replication is the best way uh, to rely on, uh, because shared disk remount uh, can lose well some of the can lose some uh, some portion of the data uh, while remounting. And uh, yeah. But in the case of coordinators, well, uh, basically coordinator does not store any user data, so uh, uh, it's very stable and static, and so uh, uh, I showed you that uh, in, in this demo, uh, each coordinator had a slave, but uh, maybe you don't need it. Uh, if one of the coordinator fails, you can remove this from the cluster and keep the operation, and then when uh, it's back, well, you can add the coordinator afterwards. So it's, so it's up to you. But anyway, uh, we can apply the high availability techni technique like a data node. And uh, yeah. So here's a, here's a compression of the uh, failure characteristics of XC over some others. <laughs> yeah. Or something, or something. Um, yeah. So architecture is very, uh, it's very <laughs> difficult. Uh, it's very different. Well, uh, in Postgres, we we does not share anything. We does not share the cache, so we don't need any any say cache invalidation. So it is very good for performance. And and the other one is uh, it is based on shared everything. So uh, if the configuration is not good, we will suffer from uh, the cache invalidation protocol. And number of servers. Well, uh, I have experienced with 10 servers, but uh, maybe 20 or more. It depends on, uh, yeah, it depends on the uh, communication overload uh, for the GTM. And uh, in the case of, uh, uh, in the case of O and R, um, I don't know what is the reality of the maximum number of the servers, but uh, most deployment are two servers or four, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well, you know, if, if if we if we pay more, we can we we can have more. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how it works. Yeah. yeah. And hardware requirement. So uh, because because XC is shared nothing, so we don't have any specific requirement for the hardware. Uh, the other one uh, requires shared disk. And read scale, yes. Right scale, yes, and other one it depends. Uh, how to how to maybe the the most uh, most convenient way or most most common way is uh, application level plot patching. So it means that uh, well to avoid the cache invalidation protocol, and it is a key to uh, to scale out uh, the other one. And the status storage failure uh, impact. So uh, XC has very limited in, uh, in, uh, impact, and uh, and we can and we can fail over each component, or, uh, each component, and while this failover, we can keep the cluster running. Um, yeah, uh, in the other case, yes, a storage failure is a single point of failure, and uh, in the case of server failure, yeah, affected component needs failover, so uh, it needs. It, it depends on what uh, what fails, and the uh, good thing about the other one is, yeah, even though 
one will serve as tail. They can, uh, as long as the uh, storage is running, we can, uh, we can, uh, they can keep it running. So, uh, so now we are uh, extending this. Um, we have just, yeah, just released 1.1, and uh, uh, we are planning to have the next major release uh, by the end of this calendar year. Uh, it includes more robust JDBC and Prana, as well as 9.3 merge, and also external project is um, developing the uh, GUI and HA tool. So, and also, here's some list of the car of, of the upcoming upcoming releases. Um, we began uh, to uh, to analyze and study how we can implement this. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so we have a couple of minutes for additional uh, questions. So, any any questions? Any more questions? Um, we have just begun uh, the merge with the 903. And uh, yeah, uh, 903 has a, set, has a couple of important features such like uh, materialized view and event triggers. And uh, we are quite not sure if we can say, support all these uh, with the next measure. Uh, because uh, because it is not simple to yeah to uh, to to work with XC so maybe we may need well some more uh, say some more uh, period or longer period for uh, to do that and I I, I found that uh, through the initial work I found that event trigger will be much simpler to support yeah but materialized view uh, could be a bit a bit more complicated work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so in this demo, so I configured the slave with a single with a synchronized uh, replication, synchronous replication. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.